Sometimes when using a device that's as feature rich as something like the Line 6 Helix is, it can be quite easy to overlook some features that could be extremely usable for our particular situation. Now, I say our particular situation because you could line up 100 different users and they're all going to have different needs and different end goals, which are going to determine how they're going to use it. Now, I think the folks at Line 6 have done an incredible job of packing the Helix and continually adding to it full of features that are extremely useful, but it doesn't mean we're going to use them all. But I think it is important to become aware of those features. Now, one of those features that I've talked about many times and that I'm a very heavy user of is that of snapshots. And snapshots solve a lot of problems that would otherwise be quite difficult to deal with. One of those problems would be switching from one tone to the next without a big gap. So seamless switching. And as we all know, if we switch presets on the Helix, which we can store many of, there is a gap in between the switching that is more than just annoying. If we were playing live, it's actually kind of a deal breaker if we had to say seamlessly switch from a rhythm to a lead part or a part in a song where we're playing clean and then want to add some effects to it. So snapshots come along and solve that to a degree. But there are limitations to snapshots and things that might not work out for some folks. What if we wanted to switch from the sound of a, of a Fender style amp and seamlessly go into something much more modern and heavy? We can't do that with snapshots because we're not able to actually change out the amp model by hitting a snapshot. Sure, we can add in an overdrive or a distortion effect, but we would still be stuck with the same original amp model. Now, another thing that I see a lot of folks do is make presets that are very complex, that have a lot of effects built in and use up a lot of different blocks. And I myself am a person who uses the Helix like that a lot. But a lot of times in that situation, and much like my live preset that I use when performing, I'm seldom using all of the effects blocks at the same time. In fact, I oftentimes maybe only have one on or maybe two on. So when you think about it, do we need all of those effects they're present all the time if they're not being used. Well, if you're utilizing snapshots and want to have the ability to be able to just snapshot on and off with different effects or change their parameters, and yeah, you do have to have them there. But what if I told you there is a way, if we think through our presets, that could possibly, for some users, solve that issue for us? A number of firmware updates ago, a very cool feature called Preset Spillover was introduced. Now, as most of us know, there are two processors within the Helix that take care of handling all of the modeling and effects and whatnot. Now, we have two paths in the Helix, Path A and Path B. And as any experienced Helix user knows, Path A runs on one of those processors and Path B runs on another. So if we load up Path A, and find that uh, some of our effects or amp blocks are grayed out and we can't access. And that's because there's not enough processing power left to do that. So if we simply balance between the two different paths, we can sort of squeeze out all of the possible processing power the Helix has. So if maybe we want to run two amps, you might need to have one on path A and one on path B. So by juggling between those two, we can actually load up our preset with quite a few effects models, amp blocks, and other various things that we might need for our presets. But what if we didn't need to load everything up all at once. What if we kept our preset, or what if we could possibly keep our preset quite simple? Could we possibly get away with only utilizing one path? So what preset spillover is, is the ability to condense the helix down to almost looking more and behaving more like an HX stomp. One path eight blocks. That's it. Well, you might say, well, why would I do that? That's silly. I get rid of half of my processing power. Well, the processors are now going to be used in different ways. By utilizing preset spillover, we can actually change complete presets seamlessly gapless without any gap between switching. So we could switch from one sound to a completely different sound without that gap, allowing us to maybe set up maybe a larger number of presets, but to get through a night with this gapless switching, and if we think it through a little bit more, this just might be something that could work for us. Let's go over to HX Edit, and I'm going to show you exactly how we might be able to utilize this. And I know this isn't going to be for everybody, and that's okay, but I do want to make folks aware of it because I don't hear a lot of folks talking about it, and with a little bit of thought, we might be surprised at how we might be able to use this feature to get a lot more out of our Helix. Okay, so first and foremost, what we need to do is we need to go down to the Helix and hit our little hamburger button and then enter into global settings. 
Now under the preferences selection, you'll see that right over on the right is preset spillover. Now watch what happens up on HX edit when I actually engage preset spillover. Now it says when we do this, remove path two to enable preset spillover. So if we have a preset that already has blocks on that path, it's going to remove that. So it's going to alter this. Now you'll notice that I have a very simple preset up here utilizing just the first path. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I would encourage everybody just make a backup before doing this in case it screws anything up. It probably shouldn't. You can probably switch back and it'll be all right. But it's always a good idea to make a backup. You'll notice now up on HX edit what happened. Well, we condense down to one path. Now, what's going to happen is we're using the two processors within the Helix to not only run our amp and cab blocks, but also now to allow it to switch seamlessly. So we've given up half our power to gain this seamless switching. So now how can we utilize this? Well, let's go back for a second and switch back out of preset spillover. And you'll notice now that I'm back to the original view that we're all used to on the Helix. So here I have a few of my presets. These are available for free at my website and they are little samples of full blown Line 6 Marketplace presets I have. I'll play some demo videos later at the end once we're done discussing this. And I'll have all the links below to the free presets and the Line 6 Marketplace presets as well. So here I have this little preset based off of the Brit J45 norm. Now, if I was to be playing that and switch over to a Tweed Blues Bright preset that I have, you'll notice there will be a big gap between the switching, as you'll hear here. That seems to be a bit of a deal breaker. So what happens if we go back in and turn our preset spillover on? Let's see what that does and what effect it has when I try to switch between completely different presets. So here we are back in our preset spillover mode. You can see I'm going back and forth here between two different presets now. Let's switch between those same two presets and see what happens now. It now uses that second processor to load up the next preset with this gapless switching or as gapless as we can get it. And I think it's gotten to the point with this that it really wouldn't be a deal breaker anymore. We could set up a bunch of presets in a row for our sets and be off and running. And now instead of using snapshots, we could set up maybe eight different presets and have everything from like Fender Clean, which goes into maybe a, a Vox edge of breakup tone into a more uh, broken up, overdriven Marshall into something like a rev generator for our, our full blown, more modern lead. If, if that's what you would want set up and it'll allow us to do that. So one thing we could do is we could take a simple preset like this. You'll notice I have five blocks, which leaves me three blocks and whatever processing power is left. But what if I was on this J 45 preset and I said, you know what, let's actually do this. Let's just expand this over here. And let's say I wanted this and also this preset again, with a bubble vibrato on. I could come over here, copy it, and then I've already done this, but I could paste this preset again right here, allow that to load up and maybe come over here and say, I'm gonna add a stereo bubble vibrato in there. We'll save that to this new, maybe I'll uh, call that vibe. We'll save it. Now, utilizing our gapless switching, I should be able to switch between the non vibrato version and the vibrato version.
And again, I could copy this here, paste it into my next block, and let's say have the same preset yet again, but this time I will put in the Ampeg liquefier. And I could just name that maybe Chorus. We will save that. Now I've got the same preset, one with no effect, one with vibrato, and one with chorus. the ability to switch over this Fender Bassman style tone. Maybe over to Mandarin Rocker. We can see with some thoughts, we can actually create full presets as long as they're within the boundaries of what we can fit in one path, both for the processing power needed and the number of blocks. So we'd be basically down to HX stomp territory within the helix. But if that's all we're using in a preset, maybe we can get away with this with some thought. We will have more presets, but we can't avoid using snapshots and we can maybe just switch complete presets to get through a night. And we could just come over here and load them up in order in our set list and be able to switch seamlessly between them throughout the night and giving us access to a lot more possibilities different amp tones all together, maybe within the same song, different effects. And with a little bit of planning, it might just work out that a lot of folks might be able to utilize this. And maybe they would have discounted because they would have said, I can't get away with just eight blocks. That's just not going to happen. But maybe with a little bit of planning, it can possibly work out for us. All right, so that video was just to raise awareness more than anything. Obviously, I just gave a few examples of how it could be used. It's really going to be up to us to decide whether it is something that we can use or that we want to use, but it might open some new doors and some new avenues for you that maybe you wouldn't have thought of before and give you a lot more tonal possibilities at your toes at a particular performance so that maybe we now can access different amp tones with a little bit of planning and figuring out, hey, I can copy and paste the same preset add an effect, much like the way snapshots would behave. But I can also have other presets that I can switch between seamlessly to completely different amp rigs. And if we keep each sort of amp rig, we'll call it snapshot, simplified enough, which may actually be possible, it could allow us a lot more possibilities. So take it for what it's worth. Obviously, I understand this isn't going to be for everybody, but I thought I might pique some folks' interest and at least raise awareness for this really cool kind of hidden feature that I don't hear a lot of people discuss. And I hope it's helpful. If not, no worries. At least we all are aware it's there now. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to leave you with a couple demo videos now for some of my Line 6 Marketplace presets that I love so much and that I utilize all the time as well. The links will be below for some free presets from my website and also for these Line 6 Marketplace presets. And if you want to help support my channel, you can go grab some. It's always greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your time with me. Please like the video, share it with anybody you think would get some use or enjoyment out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. Ciao for now.